following is an example of a two-variable truth table. The argument we have here consists of two premises and a conclusion. Every argument, of course, has at least one premise and, at maximum, one conclusion. In this case, premise one is if p, then q, or not q. Premise two is q, and the conclusion in this case is p or q. Now, when testing the argument for validity, what we have to do is build a truth table for the argument, and we do it as follows. First, we have to determine the number of rows, and the number of rows is easy to determine. It's always equal to 2 to the n, where n is the number of variables. So in this case, we have two variables, a variable p and variable q, and so we'll need a total of four rows. And I have, of course, uh, one on top to put the, the stuff in for the columns. Speaking of columns, determine the number of columns is a bit trickier. There'll be one for each variable, there'll be one for each premise, one for the conclusion, and one for each part, so to speak. But there are no repeats. So, for example, in this case, we have q as a variable and also as a premise. But we won't put that up, up there twice because that would just be you know, wasting space and time. So the first thing we do to build a table is, once we get the rows, we start by putting in the variables. Out of tradition, p always goes first, q always goes second. Then what we have to do is put in the rest of the parts. Specifically, we have to put in the uh, premises and the conclusion. Now, premise 2 is already there as q. And putting premise 1 in, it might be tempting to simply take all of the first premise and simply stick that here. However, the problem is we wouldn't be able to do the column for it you figure out the truth values for it just by sticking it there because we don't have all the parts. So what we have to do in this case is we just can't put it up there as it is. We have to break down this complex thing to its simpler parts. And so this is the main part and it will get its own column but we need to have the parts up there first. And it consists of the following parts. We have the main thing and then of course to break it down piece by piece We've got the if p then q, and of course, we also have the or not q. So we have to put all those parts up there. And so to put the parts up there, we take this part, and we can, well, we can put the um, not q, we can put that up here, just only for convenience sake. We'll put the, the not q there. So that we have, you know, to close by the q. Then we'll put up the, in this case, the if p then q, put that up there, and put up the whole thing. And then we can put the conclusion, p or q, we can put that up there. Now, once we have the stuff on the top, then we have to fill in the t's and f's. Now, to fill in the t's and the s for the variables always follows the same pattern. We go to the column furthest to the right and we alternate t and f until we run out of rows. In this case, we do that, you know, t, f, t, f, and then we're out of rows. Then we head to the left and we alternate groups of two. Now, a two variable table with the P and Q will always look like this. The true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. Always looks like that. And the reason why is this gives us all possible combinations. Both true, both false, P true, Q false, P false, Q true. Then we go to fill in the rest of the parts. Now, not Q is simply a negation of Q. And when something negates, it reverses the truth values. So whatever is negated, whatever the column is, becomes the opposite of that. It's sort of, in this case, we have the Q and the anti-Q. So true becomes false, false becomes true, true becomes false, and false becomes true. Then we go to here, which is a conditional claim. P is the antecedent, because it's in the first part, and then on the point of the arrow is the Q, which is the consequent. And that's just a matter of the positioning. 
whatever's on the non-pointy part of the arrow is the antecedent, whatever's on the pointy end is the consequent. Now a conditional is true, except when the antecedent, in this case p, is true, and the consequent is false. So we have a true antecedent, a true consequent, so the whole thing is true. Then we have a true antecedent, false, consequent, so the whole claim is false. Then we have a false antecedent, a true consequent, so the claim is true. And lastly, a false antecedent and a false consequent, and so it is true. Now that may seem kind of odd to have the conditional work out like that, but it actually makes sense if you think of it in terms of a promise. For example, if someone is promised that if they get a, say, a, um, a B on the final, then they'll get a B in, in the class, the only thing that shows that the person has lied to them is if they get a B on the final and they don't get a B in the class. If they get a B on the final and they get a B in the class, the person has told the truth. If they don't get a B on the final, but somehow they get a B in the class, you know, their lucky day in a way, perhaps, but they have not been lied to. If they don't get a B on the final, they don't get a B in the class, they have not been lied to. The only thing that shows the person has lied to them is if they get a B on the final and don't get a B in the class. Then the promise is a lie. Now turning to this, what we look to in order to do this is we've got P, then Q. So you look here. That's our one of our disjuncts, because this is a disjunction because of the symbol here. And this is our other disjunct, not Q. So we look at these two columns. And with a disjunction, it's true, except when both of the disjuncts, both of the parts, are false. And the reason why it works that way is because it's basically saying one or the other or both. So, for example, if there's a Christmas party and I promise to bring, say, eggnog and cookies, and I show up with eggnogs and cookies, I've told the truth. If I show up with eggnogs but no cookies, well, a little worse, but I still told the truth. If I show up with cookies but no eggnog, well, not as great as eggnog and cookies, but I've still spoken the truth. The only way that I lie is if I show up with nothing. So in this case, we look at P then Q, not Q, and we try to find a case where they're both false. So false and true is, of course, true. True or false here is, of course, true. False or true is, of course, true. And true or true is, of course, true. Now our conclusion in this case is P or Q. This is also a disjunction. So in this case we look to the P column and the Q column, and it's true when both of them are true or one is true. It's only false when both are false. So true or true is true. True, false is true. False, true is true. And false, false is false. Now comes the actual test for validity. In this case, after all this work, it seems somewhat uh, disappointing, but all we do is we look to see which is our first premise or second premise in this case, and we see can we have the premises all true and the conclusion false. So can this be true, and this be true, and this be false at the same time? And what we do is we check row by row. So here we have a true conclusion, here we have a true premise, and here we have you know, true premise, we've got true premise, true conclusion. So far so good. Then we go to here, we have false premise, true premise, and a true conclusion. So that's okay. Then we go here, and we've got true premise, true premise, true conclusion. Then we go to our last row, and we've got false premise, true premise, false conclusion. Now, since we did not find a single row with a false conclusion and all the premises true at the same time, the argument would turn out to be valid. 
Now, if we didn't find that, if we found a false conclusion and all true premises, the argument would be invalid. But in this case, when we look at you know the one case where the conclusion is false, we see that both the premises, um, you know, in this case, one premise is true, one is false, and so even though we have a false conclusion, we don't have all true premises. So the argument is still valid. So that's an example of a basic two-variable truth table.